Hi everyone, this is Jeremy Van. Good evening to all of you. Uh, today I'm going to introduce you to a new um, form of statistical model. This video will be definitely shorter than the previous one on the vector order regressive. I know that was like 45 minutes. This one will definitely be shorter than the previous one. So as you can see the title here, I'm going to present you the logistic regression. So the purpose is uh, to get you accustomed to the logistic regression. I'm not going to try to get into complicated uh, concepts here, just for you guys to have a basic understanding of what the logistic regression is. It's already a quite complicated uh, mo model to deal with. So I'm going to go step by step so that you guys can understand the basics. So the logistic regression is a very useful model. In fact, it is used pretty much everywhere by many organizations, by many industries. And the particularity of the model is that it is binary. So as I say here, what is the logistic model? So as you guys know, it's a statistical model based on the logistic function to model a binary dependent variable. And of course, the binary dependent variable means two possible outcome represented by two possible values so you have like pass fail yes no male female or black white so the interesting thing about the logistic regression is that it deals a lot with categorical data so basically the dependent variable your categorical so the dependent variable in your data is categorical so it means that it has words and because when you use a statistical package, whether you start with Excel or with R, Python, or SAS, or S, uh, SPSS, no matter what statistical model uh, software you use, sorry, since we cannot quantify, since you know you cannot use words as a way to measure things, so you're going to try to quantify them by labeling them as zero and one. So that leads us to the log odd ratio. So the log odd ratio in the logistic regression is, uh, is the unit that is basically what measures the probability of occurrence. Remember, we said that the logistic regression, so it is binary because it is based on two possible outcomes. So that is the difficulty. It's not like the simple multiple uh, it's not like the simple linear regression or the multiple linear regression when you know that you only have uh, one outcome variable that the result we know that it will give you that specific outcome there's no other alternative with the logistic regression there is an alternative so that's what makes it interesting so as i said the log odd ratio measures the probability of occurrence and the unit of measurement of the log odd ratio or the log odd scale is the logistic unit also known as logit sorry guys so if you see logit regression that's what it means the logit stands for logistic unit so when you see logic regression, logistic regression, that's what it stands for. So the question is, where is it used? So as I said, it is pretty much used everywhere. It is used in finance, it is used in politics, it is used in economics, of course, it is used in, uh, in, in the healthcare industry specifically hospitals or clinics will always try to measure for instance try to predict the amount of people that can catch diabetes so they use that to predict disease like how many people can catch diabetes so they're gonna they're going to measure that by using many multiple uh, independent variables like age sex sometimes skin color because they assume that there's some ethnic groups that tend to have some disease compared to others like for instance we say that uh, blacks tend to have uh, more diabetes than whites and then whites tend to have uh, I don't know the flu more than blacks I'm just making stuff up it, it doesn't mean that's necessarily true but the point is to say that that's why I put black and white here the point is to say that they use uh, those uh, they use those variables to measure the possible outcome for a disease to occur so 
that being said, I'm going to show you guys the graph of the logistic regression, how it looks like. I'm going to give you a practical example that will lead us to the to, to the model of the of, of the logistic regression. Okay, so how the graph looks like. Oops, where is it? Uh, the graph of the logistic regression, so you always have your X and your Y. So the graph is interesting. So the probability that an event or the outcome may not occur is always on the on the uh on the x-axis okay so it's zero and one you have here actually let me move a little bit the graph so you guys can see better all right let me just put it here all right so you have your y and you have your x so as i said that the probability that the event or the outcome may not occur is always at zero so the data points or the values of the observations are set here. And then the values of the, of the observation of the outcome that may occur are here on one. Okay, so you have this. So of course, you cannot have you cannot use the linear regression you see there is no residual that touches the point uh, the the regression line at all so if you use the linear if you try to use the linear regression while it's supposed to be a logistic regression you will have first of all the uh they will the model will be not statistically significant. There will be no relationship between uh, between the, the dependent and the independent variable. And on top of that, the R square will be will be way, 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 way. It will be pretty bad. It will be bad. It will be like close to zero because they, that means that there's no relationship. So since the simple linear regression is not the right model to fit. Uh, the logistic one to fit that kind of data we're simply going to apply the logistic model and how does the logistic model looks like it looks like this that's the logistic regression All right, so now you guys have the graph of the logistic regression, how it looks like a little bit. I'm going to give you a very practical example. Let's say you're trying to buy a house, okay? And everyone, people may not know this, but that's what real estate companies do. Of course, when you're trying to buy a house, the first thing they have to check is your credit score. They wanna make sure that you can afford paying your mortgage on a long-term basis, usually 30 years. So let me give you a data that uh, the data so you have a credit score so you have credit score which is your X and you have approval which is your dependent variable so your Y okay so let's say let, let me put some random credit scores here. So you have 593, 809, 
So yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, let's put a tenth one here. Uh, and then you have uh, seven twenty-three. Okay, so you have here ten credit scores. So let's put here zero one one zero zero one zero zero one zero. Okay, so you send your application to the real estate company. You don't know if they're going to approve it or not. You look at your credit score. You're like, eh, I think they, they they might approve it, but they have some standards. So. Since they don't know what your credit score is to determine if you they will give you the approval or not, they create a pool, okay? So the green one is for the approved score. So let me put it here, approved. And the red one, not approved. Okay? All right, so we know that the zeros are the probability of no occurrence. So we know that it's not going to occur, and the ones are means that they're going to occur, okay? Zero, you're not approved. One, you're approved. Okay, so let's put all the zeros. Uh, no, let's start with the ones. So the ones you have, 809. Uh, 765 uh, you have 750 and you have uh, 799 all right and then uh, for not approved you have 593 you have 650 you have 702 you have 718, you have 695, and you have 723. And the funny thing is that all these are pretty much good credit scores. But, you know, um, real estate companies have their standards and it depends. Some you may get in with those credit scores, with some they may they will not give you the loan that, that you need for your mortgage. So you see that we have two possible outcomes, right? So either your so if your credit score falls into that category, so let's say anything above uh, seven sixty five. So credit score above seven sixty five, you're getting approved. So if your credit score is credit score lower than 765 you get rejected okay so they use the logistic regression to determine that and that is the equation they use here so since we're only dealing with uh, one predictor and one dependent variable therefore our model will not be complicated to set up so what will be D model. So first we start with by writing the log odd which equals to P occurrence over P no occurrence. So is the probability of occurrence over the probability of not occurrence so usually the probability of occurrence we can say that it's a one so the probability of not occurrence will be one minus p okay so it will be one minus this one minus p so it's interesting because the one minus p you can also it's basically your y all right it's you can consider it as your y so this is your y which is your dependent variable so how are you going to write this so it's going to be log of b 
equal one of one minus p equal beta zero plus beta one x plus epsilon okay so that's how you start writing pretty much the log odd to fit the regression model so that is going to give you p equals one over one plus exponential of beta zero plus beta one x plus epsilon so you may say where this uh, where this exponential comes from well because we had a log right so don't forget that the inverse of the logarithm is the exponential so and because we have the inverse so the minus becomes a plus two so we have here one equal one so p equals one over one plus the exponential of beta zero plus beta one x plus the standard error so people have a way of writing the uh the expo the the logistic regression sorry so i'm going to write it in both ways So the formula of the logistic regression is p equal equals one over one plus exponential of beta zero plus beta one x plus epsilon. Okay, that is the formula. That's what real estate companies use when they try to determine your credit score and not just real estate companies, I just use that as an example, but every company when they try to determine like your approval of something or they try to predict a disease for like, you know, for the healthcare system, that's what they use. Or people can also write it this way. P equals exponential of beta zero plus beta x plus epsilon over one plus exponential beta zero plus beta one. It's basically the same. In fact, the exponential of beta zero plus beta one x plus this is the probability of occurrence, okay? So this is simply the prob so this is like the one the initial one minus p. So this is the probability of occurrence. So that's why you have this up here. So you can write the logistic regression this way or that way. It doesn't really um, it doesn't really matter. But this is pretty much for you guys to see a little bit how the logistic regression works. Uh, Yes, it's not like a, uh, an easy uh, model to, to use, but once you understand the basics and you do your own research, you further your own research, you, you will definitely get how it, how it functions. You can use it for anything. You can use it for anything. It's a, very useful, it's a very useful model. That's why I'm showing you guys how it works. So let me know in the comments what you think. I like the regression model, or the logistic regression pretty much. Uh, as I said, it's pretty useful. But let me know what you think and if you think it's difficult, if you think uh, it's something you can cope with. And let me know also if you want me to cover another statistical model. In the comment, I'd be glad to do that. Thanks. See you next time.